afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is not important who I am. I'm just a sinner saved by an extraordinary savior. I'm just an ordinary guy saved by an extraordinary God, and I'm here to bring you some sad news. And then after that, I'm going to bring you some good news, some very good news. Inside the Holy Bible and the scripture, it's known as the Romans Road to Salvation. First of all, we're going to go over who needs salvation. Then why do we need salvation? And then third, how God can provide salvation to us. And then fourth, how we obtain that salvation. And then the fifth part I'm going to talk about out of this good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, is the results of salvation. And that is hallelujah, good news. First of all, the Bible says in Romans 3.10 that everybody needs salvation. For there is no one righteous, no not one, myself included. It says in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned, including sure, myself. Sure. Genesis 1, 12, 1, 29. Genesis 1, 12, 1, 29. God created me. I know you're Romans 3, 23 says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And then, and then the price for my, the price of the payment for my sin would be death. You see, I, Bill Ritz, deserve death, judgment, and hell. God, God I love you, man. God knows everything about the world. I love you, but God, God knows. But, why, why but, think, but, why but guess, but guess, doing? but guess what? Why, Romans six twenty three. Why do you think he's doing? I got some bad news why, for you. Why? Why do you think he's doing? Well, what is the reason? Is there is drugs is, is a form in, of? Is it in the Bible? I'm not here to no, preach against your drugs. I'm here to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. It says in Romans six twenty three, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, we have all broken God's law. The wrath of God abides in us because we have broken God's law. But because of God's love, because He loves you so much, He sent His only begotten Son to be the propitiation of your sins and my sins as well. It says in Romans chapter 5, verses 8 through 10, But God demonstrates His own love towards us, and that while we were still sinners, Jesus Christ died for us. But more than having been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through Jesus Christ. The fourth area I'm going to talk about, ladies and gentlemen. We receive salvation and eternal life by grace through faith in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. I love you guys. I love you. I love you. I'm here to give a message of love. Romans 10, 9 says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's good news. It says in Romans 10, 13, for whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Many people don't understand this, but the word call or to call upon or to call on the Lord from the original Greek, it means to, to invoke to give testimony to, to worship. In other words, Jesus doesn't want us just to call his name. He wants us to worship him. And the fifth area is salvation through Jesus Christ brings us peace with God because Jesus is the Prince of Peace. It says in Romans 5, 1 through 2, therefore having been justified by faith, we have peace, peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. That is good news. Now the following verse is sadly misunderstood and intentionally taken out of context by so many Christians and even pastors. And that is Romans chapter 8 verse 1. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. But the problem is, there's the second half of that verse. The whole verse reads, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. You see, if we're not walking in the Spirit of Christ, then the consequences are condemnation and eternal judgment. If we're walking in the Spirit of Christ, it is eternal life. It says in Romans chapter 8, verses 37 through 39, Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life 
nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. You may be asking, what do I do with these scriptures that this Bible preacher's sharing? Hey, God, blessings to you. Well, first of all, I had to admit that I was a sinner. I, Bill Retz, am a sinner. I deserve death, judgment, and hell. That's what I deserve. And secondly, to cry out to the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. To cry out means to worship Jesus Christ. And third, believe in Jesus. The word believe means to believe, to commit to, to adhere to, to abide to. And fourth, I must repent from my sins. We must repent from our sins. The word repent means to have a change of mind and a change of heart and turn from our sins and turn back to Christ. Being a Christian is a verb action. You see, there is no salvation without repentance. God doesn't want anybody to perish in hell, but his desire is that all would come to repentance. Jesus commanded us in Mark 1.15, he said, to repent of our sins and believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. You see, we must believe in and surrender to his word of God, all of it. Jesus said in Luke 13, 3, I tell you, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. It says in 2 Corinthians 7, 10, for godly sorrow produces repentance leading to salvation, not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death. You see, these worldly pleasures that we're fighting for, fighting for marijuana that you guys are protesting for, and it brings death, it is worldly. Jesus said in Luke 24, 46 through 47, and thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our Jerusalem. Today is your day of salvation. Jesus Christ wants you to come to him. He loves you that much. The scripture says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever would believe in him would not perish and have everlasting life. In that gospel, in the nutshell, of John 3, 16, first we see the source. For God so loved and then we see the extent of his love. For God so loved the world. And then we see the sacrifice of his love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever would believe it in him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. Is that your pro-marijuana Bible verse? I know, but you're taking God's word out of context, sir. I, I, I know what it says, and I know that you're using that word. And I'm going to be honest, I had, I had no idea that you guys were doing a, a protest supporting marijuana. I'm not here to preach against your marijuana. I'm not here to, yes, I, I, I'm very aware of it. I know that people take that Bible verse out of context. God is the greater of all things, but some things are simple. Um, you know, marijuana and drugs are a form of uh, pharmacia. It, it's a form of witchcraft and sorcery, sir. And I'm only saying that because you brought the subject up. Yes. Well, there's a lot of things that are bad, uh, uh, that are bad for our health, that are sinful for our lives. It would be a sin for me to uh, latch onto one of these beautiful girls and go to bed with her. That would be, and God created her too. Yes. Yeah. But anyways, hey, nice try though, sir. I like your, all right. Take care, sir. I love you, man. All right.